Welcome, I am Terry Tropin, and today I'll be discussing the changes to the ICD-10 CM codes, the guidelines for the codes for 2025. First, let me start with some information about myself. I have a master's in healthcare administration informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus, and I have RHIA CCSP certifications, I'm a HEMA approved ICD-10 CM PCS trainer. I'm a ad former adjunct professor at Montgomery College in Maryland. I also have written some books. These are my books. They're available on Amazon. Uh, Evaluation and Management Coding Made Easy, ICD-10 CM Coding Guidelines, ICD-10 PCS Coding Guidelines Made Easy. These are updated every year. The um, PCS coding book, you can find the 2024 and the 2025 books already up on Amazon. The CM book, um, this 2024 is up on Amazon. The 2025 book should be up by the end of August, hopefully. And the book on the changes between 2024 and 2025 is also already up on Amazon. You may think, Gee, are the changes enough that I really need to buy another book? Yes, and this will describe what the changes are. These books are on Amazon, as I said, and they're updated every year. So let's look at what changes have been made to the guidelines. Changes have made to the guidelines for in Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 4, 7, 9, 14, and 21. Now they're not big changes, but some of them are important changes, and some of them are small but easy to miss, but still important. So let's look at each one of these. First of all, sepsis. Sepsis due to post-procedural infection. So you'll see throughout these that the um, changes are in bold. Anything that's been deleted is crossed out in these, uh, in this Slide, these slides. So sepsis due to post-procedural infection. So this is what was added here. So it says, so sepsis following a post-procedural wound, surgical site infection, code from T81.41, T81.43, infection following a procedure. It was added, T81.49, infection following a procedure, other surgical site was added. Code from 086.00, 086.03, that stays, but it was added to that. Code A86.09, infection of the surgical wound, surgical wound, other surgical site was added. So you have other options to code for these. So coronavirus, uh, every year there's another change to uh, uh, coronavirus. So they changed to a more specific code. Z20.828 was crossed out and they changed it to Z20.822. Now this was changed online but it wasn't changed in the guidelines themselves. So if you have a 2024 code book it was still Z20.828. So Z20.828 said contact with suspected exposure to other viral communicable diseases. Z20.822 is specific to COVID-19. So this is more specific to COVID. So that's important. I want these to be as specific as possible. So now let's move on to chapter two. That was chapter one, this is chapter two. So in the guidelines for section M, the codes in the third paragraph were updated from Z85.0 to Z85.8 to Z85.0 to Z85.85. So current malignancy versus personal history of malignancy. Codes from subcategories Z85.0, Z85.85 should be assigned for the former site of a primary malignancy, not the site of a secondary malignancy. Codes from, uh, it was subcategory Z85.8, or now it says Z85.89. So this was, this is now more specific. 
Now it's Z85.89 rather than Z85.8. More specific. Every year it gets more and more specific. Okay, also in chapter two, neoplasms. We're talking about lymphomas. So breast implant associated with anaplastic large cell lymphoma, BIA, ALCL. A type of lymphoma that can develop around a breast implant. So they changed it. Here's the change here in bold. Here we go. Uh, they changed, they added C84.LB, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, ALK negative, in remission. So you changed it to in remission. So the lymph, in the picture, the lymphoma is in blue, the, here in blue. The breast implant is here in gray, and they added a code for in remission. So um, lymphoma can develop around a breast implant, and they added a code for in remission, not just for lymphoma. So again, more specific, very, very specific codes. Okay, also in neoplasm, uh, secondary malignant neoplasm of lymphoid tissue. And they changed this here. You see they crossed something out. And before they said um, lymphoid tissue metastasizes beyond the lymphoid nodes, use a code from C81 to C85 with a final character of nine. They changed, they took out that nine because it's not always going to be nine, okay? So for example, they put in an example, and in this, in this case, it's a final digit of eight, C83.398. Um, so you're still gonna do extranodal and salad organ sites, but it's gonna be a final digit of eight rather than nine, okay? Um, so that's important, so you don't assume it's going to be a nine anymore. Okay, so let's move on to chapter four, endocrine nutritional and metabolic diseases. So they have a new section for pre-symptomatic type one diabetes mellitus. So this is E10A and then other uh, codes under that for pre-symptomatic, signed for early stage type one diabetes with no symptoms yet. So here we have um, normal glycemic, presymptomatic, and then we have dysglycemic, glycemia, presymptomatic. So it's not right, but the glycemia, the glycemia levels is not right, but it's still not um, a considered, um, it's type one diabetes, but there are no symptoms and then you go into symptomatic. So normal, normal glycemia, dysglycemia, and the symptomatic glycemia. So this is important to, because um, person may have no symptoms but still have diabetes. So normal to abnormal. Okay, so let's go, that's the only one in uh, chapter four, so let's go on to chapter seven, I in Adnexa. So this is kind of a correction of an error. For glaucoma, it says bilateral glaucoma stage with different types or stages. Well, it says um, patient has bilateral glaucoma and glaucoma and each eye is documented as having different type. Classification does not distinguish later laterality. Well, it says H40.10, H40.11, H40.20. Well, they deleted H40.11 because if you look at your book, you'll see that H40.11 H40 does have laterality. So they crossed that out. And in the next paragraph, um, again, they deleted the H40.11 because it does have digits for right, left, bilateral. So they deleted that. So it's kind of a correction more than anything else. Okay, glaucoma. You see that H40.10, unspecified open angle glaucoma, has digits for stages but not laterality. So that was correct in the previous slide. H40.11 
has digits for stages and laterality, so that's why it was deleted. H40.20, uh, digits for stages but not laterality. So H40.10, H40.20, it is appropriate to say that, um, but H40.11 does say laterality, so it was correct to cross those out. Okay, so moving on to chapter nine. So the heading for this part here for myocardial infarction, the heading was ST elevation myocardial infarction. They added type one, the words type one, okay? That was not in there, but the, this section is only discussing type one, so they added that in there, okay? That's easy to miss and it's kind of a clarification that this is talking about type one. So it doesn't make a lot of difference, but it it's kind of makes, makes it a little clearer. Um, and then the, under that, um, it's under four, other types of myocardial infarction, it says uh, type two, underlying cause coded first if applicable, and then do not assign I24.89, um, so it, it is adding, adding that extra digit, the nine, in there. So small changes, but they may mean something if you um, um, code those a lot. So just be aware that those are changes. Okay, diseases, uh, chapter, uh, genital urinary system, chapter 14. Um, so they changed this to add digits for... Um, uh, chronic kidney disease. And it's, before it said N18.3, now it's N18, um, N18.30 to N18.32, and you have moderate CKD, stage four, and then um, uh, incorporates the current stage for stage three, unspecified stage 3A, stage 3B. So it makes, it's again, it's, it's more specific, it's more correct before. Okay, so chapter 21 um, deleted all of these codes from under the miscellaneous part. Now that doesn't mean that these codes don't longer exist. These codes are listed in the social determinants of health category. So they can't be in the social determinants of health category and the miscellaneous category. So they moved them out of the miscellaneous and put them in the social determinants of health. So they're no longer in miscellaneous. These are problems related to education literacy, employment, unemployment, exposure to risk, physical environment, et cetera. So these are no longer in the miscellaneous, they're in social determinants. So they're still there, they're just kind of moved. Okay, now this is important. Codes, Z codes that may only be principal first listed diagnosis. Previously, ZO3 encounter for medical observation, suspected disease and conditions ruled out is no longer listed under the Z codes that may only be principal first listed diagnosis. So this is deleted. So this can be listed as principal first li listed diagnosis or otherwise. So that could make a difference in your coding. Okay, so that's all the changes and guidelines, and I will put up the um, tabular list, which is more extensive than this one, not surprisingly, um, hopefully today. Uh, so again, these are the books on Amazon that I have. If you have comments or questions, you can contact me here. If you'd like a copy of these slides, give me a thumbs up, hopefully and send me your email address to my email at Terry Tropin. And remember that my books are updated every year. So 2025 is updated already and up on Amazon. This is updated on Amazon. This will be updated by the end of August and this will be updated whenever the new CPT codes are listed, whenever that could be, sometime this fall. So thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.